So once you are in here, you might be wondering that where are we, why are we working in the compiler, which is online on some cloud service? Where do we save our projects? Because there is no, okay, there is a save button, but where is it saving it? So everything goes out automatically in the ARM embed cloud. So you are there in a compiler with your username. So you have a space also in the cloud for your projects. And then these projects that are, for example, I have here, I have roughly, let's say one, one third of the programs that I have really published that also the other people can see those. So once we have done programming in here, so for example, if I open another case from here. So an example about it, we have been measuring around trip delay in one communication network. So if I take that one, and then when I'm satisfied with this, this is my own program, then I can say that I'm publishing. And then this way I will publish it onto the cloud service that also other people will, will see it. It's the same way as in the GitHub, you have a repository in there for each of your projects. So you can publish there, you can take a copy of other people's projects. You can work with the copy, for example, I mean, this one here, this is completely mine. I have programmed it from the right from the beginning. So it goes into my repository in here. But I'm not publishing now a new version, so I don't cancel. So, but for example, this Blinky that we created today, this MC Lab 10 example Blinky, this is not completely mine. It's a copy. So if I try to publish it, first it tells me to make a commit message, I think. Now it would be like publish repository, but it tries to publish into ARM embed, embed OS example Blinky, into the official example. And of course I can't publish there. If I would like to publish, let's say a development of this one, or my own copy of this, which I will modify for some purpose, I'll make a fork out of it. So if I would like to take this one and to modify it, and then after modifications publish it, I'll make a fork out of it. But I'm not at the moment making a fork. But anyway, when you just somehow edit the code, this code still belongs to the ARM embed. So there is a license for that one. You can edit the code, you can save it. Let's say I'm defining the blinking rate, 1500. And then when I have made a modification here, then I can save that, save all. It is saving it, not locally in the computer, but in the cloud. This is on my, my account there in the cloud, but it's not public. It's not published. If I made a significant modification in here and then would like to publish this, because this is not originally mine, I need to make first a commit message. Changed timing. And then publishing it. What? I think I made it. Hmm. Change timing. Ah, I think it can't even make this one because this is not mine. Uh, is it that I need to make a 
wait a second. No, 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 I can't. I mean, I think I need to make a clone first out of this and then publish that one. All right, anyway, but now our changes are there, but this is not published anywhere. This is on my account there in the cloud. So I'm free to work with this one. No one else will like interfere my work or no one else will see what I'm doing in here. And then one important thing with the embed OS operating system is that there are different versions of the operating system. So that one in here. So it imports the classes out of the, so you can see actually from here that these are all the operating system classes. And then when someone is publishing a new version, for example, for the mobile phone interface, the cellular, in cellular interface in here. So they will release a new version of the operating system. In practice, roughly once in a month comes a new version of the operating system. And then there is a way of checking that which version we have. So when you click on the embed OS, so you can see in here, what is the revision? The revision is 8,000 something. So this is, I can say, this is almost the latest version. If we would like to check that exactly which version we have here, we click the revision in here. So after a while, you get the list of the operating system versions. And then which one is which one? This is a bit tricky. Anyway, there is a date. And then there is the version number here. So these are the like the official versions, 6.4, 6.5, 6.6. 6.7, 6.8, and now we are in a 6.9. Looks like we have this one at the moment. Or, or it's in latest. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'll take the 6.8. And, and switch to that one. It was 8,300 something, I think. I'm changing to 6.8. And then now I have that one. And we can have a look at, all right back to this version of the display. And it tells me this is 8,273. So it was higher number here. So it was probably the 6.9 in there. We might even go back to that one. Uh, no, sorry, Revis revisions. And then the latest one, which is the 6.9. And switch to that one. Clicking the main or somewhere else and then back to the embed OS. And it's the 8,300 something. So this is the 6.9. And it originally brought us the 6.9 here. So then having a look on the code, this is the typical code, as you have already probably tested with this simulator. So you define the like normally, you can tell here, given a short introduction to the code, or you can give the short introduction to the code in the readme section here. This is just a text file. So there is also 
that explains that what you do with this code. And then including libraries, defining some like a constants or how do you call these? So whenever there is a text blinking rate, there is a text actually, 1,500 milliseconds. And then you define your variables in here, like the digital outlet. So you can actually define it in here as well. So I'll do it in, the, in there. So I'm changing the program that much. So definitions in the beginning, then the main program. In the main program, I could do something that I'm doing only, let's say, once. So for example, digital delete, write, and writing there the value. Cool. So it would write there, it will do these lines of the code only once. So you put here all kind of settings. And then there is an loop, which is which is a while loop, and then there is a true value in here. So it's a while loop forever. And then this led here is this is the short version of that one. So I would do it in this way that I have my another variable int red rate like this. And then in the main program, I'll give my let state a value, the let state equals to, yeah, I can write in a digital out, but it's an, it's not that obvious, but I can also read a digital out. So let this there read. I'm reading a value out of the LED and it was writing there the true, so it returns me the true value in here. And then if I would like to change the let value, I'll, I'll use the let write. And be not let Right, like this. And this is the same that they are doing in here. We will see if it works, compile. While it is compiling there, sometimes it really takes time. We can start building our circuit. So I took another piece of these small 
microcontroller board and let's place it on the board. So if you have the one where there are the blue lines and the red lines, put it that way that the red lines are on top. So we have, we'll always have a plus, minus, plus, minus. So these rows are connected down here and up here. And all these columns are connected. These pins are connected and these pins are connected. Uh, let's place it that way that there is like four pins free, four columns free in here. And once you push it there, don't take it away from there because you might destroy my microcontroller boards by taking it up from there. Especially don't lift from here. There is a really small switch in here. And don't lift from here because there is the connector. And don't lift from almost anywhere because you can break the board or bend the board or whatever. So we will put there one LED. So remember, it's the that way around that you have the uh, the longer pin is the plus. So I'll take put it in here. So this is my plus print and on the left is the minus print. Then I will go there from the pin D3. So you can have a look at where is the pin number D3. If you have an, an extra jumper in here, you can remove it. So there is a, a small jumper in here. You can just remove it, take it from the pin number D3 and go into the plus of the LED. And then we go down from the other pin of the LED. We go down into the what we call a crown. This is the logo line in here. And to get the crown there, we need to put the microcontroller crown here, there as well. So of course you don't know which pin is which one. So we always have this hardware and the board information. And in here, there is a diagram of the connections. And there is a ground pin. I connected the wire in pin D3 in here. And then I take the ground pin from here and connect it. Now I will connect it down there. So the ground from here going down in here. I have my LED connected and remember it's pin D3. Then while we were making the circuit that was compiled and now I'll mark it this one that this is the D3. So we go into the D3 and yeah, we can have a look on the compiler output here as well. So it says success. But we still modify the code. So D3 here, yeah, that's all right. Now we should have a blinking LED in there. A few lines from here, like this. I need to compile it once more. And then we have, while it's compiling, we have time for to look at the board and how to connect it to the computer. You don't need to save because it saves automatically when you click the compile. So for the board, you will need the USB cable now. So now there is everything necessary visible for you. So we downloaded the official 
blinking example and just modified it. It's doing exactly the same as earlier, but I just prefer writing these like those are defined in the class definition. So for the digital out, there is a class definition. You can actually have a look on the class definition in here. We are on the project classes, and then we go into the digital out in here. And then from there, you can find that for the digital out, there is both the write and there is a read. So this is the class and now the LED is the object according to that class definition. So the LED has the method write and the method read. In the method write, you write there for example, the value either the one, zero, true, false. So that's the logical value. And so I'm first writing there once the true. And then for another variable, that state, which is an integer variable. So originally there is no Boolean. Boolean is the variable for the true false. So you can write their Boolean pool, I think, but but the it's, the int is used, used there because it takes anyway a place in the memory. The pool is also not taking just one bit in the memory. It takes, I think, eight eight bits in the memory for one Boolean variable anyway. So anyway, then we are using their integer variables for saving the state. And then for the state, I'm reading the value that what was or what is there in the let. And then with the write, I'm writing there not the let state. That's, that's the way of getting it every other round of this program cycle, like changing the state. And I'll then put there, a, it, this is like a delay. It puts the processor in the sleep mode and it sleeps there for 1,500 milliseconds. And that's our connection. So you can connect the ground from here. Sorry, this look almost like everything is black here. So it goes down here. So this is our ground. The LED uh, sort of pin is the ground. No, yeah, yeah, sort of pin is the ground. So this line here comes to the ground as well. And the LED longer pin, that one, goes to the D tree pin in here. And then it should work. Then connect the cable, connect the cable into the computer. Then just connect the USB cable into the computer. And in a Windows computer, it is automatically uh, installing the USB serial driver from the Linux, I'm not sure. And on the Mac, I'm not sure, but anyway, there you will see how it works. And then when it, once it is connected, you get the, for example, on that board, you get the light in here, I think. That might depend on what was the earlier program, what was here on the microcontroller. And then you can have a look on the um, file explorer. And on the file explorer, you will recognize that you have get like a new drive in here, like I have an F drive. And in the F drive, there are, looks like there are two files in there. 
And if you click that, I mean, that's an HTML page. And if you click that one, it takes you just simply to the Embed OS web website. The home page of the board, clever. So, and then when we uh, compiled the code, we got it into the downloads. So once you click the downloads, you have there the file with the name bin. And then there is the, your project name and the board name and the bin. And you can copy this by moving it onto the folder in here. I'm typically not copying, I'm moving. So right click the, with the mouse and then move here. Because then I know that th my download is empty. I have really moved it. And it's interesting because then if you look at the new drive here, there is nothing, it disappears. So that's the way, that's the method it is, it is, it's used for loading it to the microcontroller. So it goes there automatically. And you see it's blinking with the rate of 1.5 seconds, 1,500 milliseconds. It's blinking the LED here. So we succeeded with our first project. So that's over there. And what else? We can, of course, modify this and then load again and play a little bit with that one, but that's how it works. 